This is lesson 1e, and we're going to be solving word problems and choosing the correct operation. When we solve math word problems, there's a few things we need to do. We need to understand what we're trying to find. We need to identify what information we need to use, and we need to make a plan of how to solve the problem. We need to figure out which sign is needed. Should we add? Should we subtract, multiply, divide? Well, what clue words are given to help us pick the correct operation? Yeah, there's going to be actual clue words in the word problem. For addition clue words, you're going to see things like sum, total, added to, plus, in all, increased by, more than, greater than, combined, all together, and we're going to use addition any time that we're combining quantities to find a total. For subtraction, Here's some clue words, difference, minus, less, subtracted from, decreased by, less than, lesser, fewer, and we're going to subtract any time that we're finding a difference and taking away a quantity or comparing how much more, how much less, or how many are left over. Those are going to be subtraction word problems. Multiplication clue words include product. That's the answer in a multiplication problem, isn't it? The product times multiplied by of you might see of squared percentage of percent of fraction of by and that's going to be anytime we're putting a number of equal amounts together to get a total or adding the same number repeatedly and division clue words include quotient divided by divided into ratio of equal shares how many each how many per equal parts and division word problems are any time we need to split a quantity into equal parts. Now, these aren't all the clue words. These are just the ones that are used the most, okay? So you might want to write these down to become familiar with them. And you can rewind the video and put them in your notes, okay? It might help you. Now, you need to remember to put the greater amount first when you're writing subtraction or division equations. So, in this one, we had to write an equation for Lisa had 37 pairs of shoes and she gave 9 pairs away. And how many pairs does she have left? So, we see the word left. We know that's a clue word. How many does she have left is a clue that it's subtraction. We're not going to do 9 minus 37. We're going to put the greater number first in the equation 37 minus 9 to do this one. And then we have this one, Tala baked three dozen cookies and she packaged them six per box. How many boxes of cookies did she have? Now we're not going to do six divided by the three dozen, which keep your eyes peeled for word problems like this, where this is an actual piece of information that we need. This three dozen that really means 36, and it's not written in number form. You, the only number you're going to see is this 6 per box. But keep in mind that 3 dozen means 3 times 12. 12 times 3, it means 36. So that is part of the information for the problem. We're going to do the 36 divided by 6. And we'll see that she has 6 boxes. Okay? So watch out for words that are numbers that are written as words, okay? And remember to put the larger number first as the minuend or put the larger number first as the dividend, okay? Like here, all right? Let's look at this one. Bob read 10 pages of a book each day. How many pages did he read in one week? Again, this one week, that's information we need. One week is seven days, so it doesn't have a seven. It might have said how many pages did he read in seven days, but it's going to be a little tricky because it puts one week. So we know one week is seven days. If you read ten pages for a week, for seven days, we need to find a total of equal amounts. So we need seven tens, don't we? So we need seven times ten. And seven times ten is... 70. So you'd fill out the second bubble on your answer sheet, okay? Just be really careful if it tries to trick you, all right? Look out for those, those numbers that are written as words. All right, let's take a look at this one. 
Dave's rent is $1,200 per month. How much rent will he pay in one year? Again, it says one year. We know he's paying $1,200 per month, but this one year is 12 months. So we have to think. We need to find a total of equal amounts. So we need to think in our head that that's the 12 months. They're not just going to give it to you every single time, all right? If he's paying $1,200 per month for a year, we need to do $1,200 times the 12 months. We can actually do this quickly and do 12 times 12, which is 144, and then add the two zeros at the end. By the time we put the commas in and the dollar sign, we can see what the correct answer is. It would be C. Now I have videos showing how to do this, and I'm going to have videos linked in the description, and I'll show you that in a second. Here, Tim drove 480 miles in eight hours. So how many miles did he drive in one hour? So we think we need to split the 480 into eight equal parts. That means we need to divide. We need to do the 480 divided by eight. You can do long division. And do it that way. Eight can't go into the four. So we're not going to put an answer above the four. Eight can go into 48. Well, six times eight is 48. So put the six above the eight, because that's what we're putting it into, the 48. Eight times six is 48. We do our subtraction. We get a zero. And because that's a zero, eight goes into zero, zero times. Our answer is 60. And we see that number five is the correct one, okay? If you're really confused about long division, we're going to get into all this, okay? Now, you should be ready to do the GED practice problems on page 39. And remember to be careful that some numbers may be written as words, okay? If you need extra help, there's going to be links to all these videos in the description, all right? Lots of them. Going from second grade to fifth grade, slowly more and more and more difficult, okay? If you're very confused, I would start here. If you're just a little bit confused, I would start in the middle, okay? But it might help you to watch all of them because they're all helpful, all right? Our next video is going to be using number lines. It's lesson 1F. And that will be the, the number line one is going to be the last one for lesson one. We're going to start on lesson two, all right? So you want to make sure you completely understand all the lessons of lesson one before you move on to lesson two, okay? Otherwise, it's going to get really confusing. All right. You want to fill in every single missing piece that you have. All right. I'll see you next video. Bye.